Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about offset optics. Uh, uh, 45 or inline, 12 o'clock. Okay, so first things first. This is a very subjective video, and it's also kind of a comparison. It's just barely below the threshold of comparison, so I will make the video, because I don't like doing comparisons, because comparisons are very, very subjective, and they usually lead to uh, misappropriation of concepts and principles. Uh, there are exceptions, of course, to everything, and this being one of those things. But this is kind of a conversation about with magnified optics coming into their own again, uh, coming back to the forefront of the chosen optic, or at least a large category of people are going to choose them to mount them on the rifles versus a traditional red dot for various reasons. Uh, we kind of have to talk about backup sights, and while backup irons are a possibility, uh, if you run a monolithic 12 o'clock, you'd have to remove the optic to use them. So a lot of people have gone to a 45 offset with irons, but now we're replacing those irons with red dot optics if you can afford it. And honestly, it's the better way to go, the backup sighting system being another optic versus iron sights for a number of reasons. Now, if you've ever shot offset 45 degree opt or irons, or better yet, you've ever tried to zero them, you understand the possible frustration and the delay of transition between one sighting system to another. Doesn't mean you can't do it, and it's certainly a more economical way to go about it, but if you can afford the red dot, it is a advantageous choice. Now, another question that comes up from time to time is why should I even have an offset optic or offset irons if I have a magnified optic that can go down to one power? The main reason behind that is what if you don't have time to go down to one power? And this is where we start thinking about the rifle less for shooting paper and more for shooting people in the event that we have to use the rifle in a self-defense or a uh, reset type situation. So if I'm dialed into four or I'm dialed into six, or these days if I'm dialed into 10, because one to tens are becoming more and more popular and, and higher quality and lighter, uh, I might have to transition from a far target to a very, very near target or start on a near target, go to a far target. Kind of the reasoning for me is just because it's, it's something that I want to be able to do even if I never realistically have to do it. Um, also, it's a backup sighting system, so if there's something happens to the optic, and it doesn't even have to be damaged. I mean, I've had my main optic fog up on me, but my, re my offset red dot was working just fine. So there are situations where it makes perfect sense to have an offset optic like that. I think the days of relegating backup sights to the rail, and probably just after zeroing them, you never really shoot them again because you put the scope on there and you can't get to them anyway. I think we're kind of past that. Though... The magnified optics do pre present some difficulties, and one of the difficulties is, um, well, priority placement, eye relief, um, awkward shooting positions, things like that. So sometimes using your offset red dot may not have anything to do necessarily with a magnification issue. If I need to get really low underneath something, I did a video about this years ago, probably closer to 10 years ago. If you go really deep in the channel, you can travel back in time and meet me from 10 years ago. I think it was about eight years ago. Uh, where I talked about offset red dots on red dot rifles. And it's something that I was experimenting with and had a lot of luck with. And ba the basic premise is this. If I'm shooting in a less likely but still possible position where I need to get underneath something, say an SUV or even a car, even with a 20-round magazine and a gun, traditional height optic, let's say 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, or up to 1.3 and higher, I can't get the rifle under and low enough to shoot underneath that. You think about working the, the barricades on a VTAC, the holes on a VTAC down on the ground, the square square triangle is usually what you get, or some variation thereof. Um, that rifle's not going through that hole. You're not gonna get the standoff and you're gonna have a height over bore issue anyway. So being able to roll the rifle on its side and get low on it and use a red dot versus trying to see through the actual optic itself, pretty advantageous. So it's not just about backup sights, but to the purpose of the video, my opinion, because that's what this is, on which one's better. Is it 12 o'clock mounted uh, on top of the optic better, or is it better to mount one on the 45? So this is the only rifle I have that runs a 12 o'clock mount, which is a little um, foreshadowing, if you will. Uh, this is a special built uh, SPR. It's running the Sage 12.5 barrel from Roscoe, because I wanted a, uh, basically kind of my idea behind the barrel built around this rifle, which is kind of off topic, but people are gonna ask. So this is like a DMR type gun or an SPR type gun, 12.5 inch with the Roscoe K9 Sage barrel Prolink gas system. Um, not that it matters, but people might ask. Uh, Optic is a EOTech Voodoo 1 to 10. It is in a Badger 1.7 mount, a Badger uh, 
basically their 12 o'clock mounting system and I'm running a Romeo 2 3M away. Now, some people may ask, well, they don't make a adapter plate from Badger for that optic, and you'd be correct. I had to take the delta point plate and modify it. It does work, it does maintain zero, and this rifle's been clattered about quite a bit, so I can trust in the fact that this, this optic maintains zero, and I've been shooting it all this morning at various distances and everything's going fine for what it is. But this is the rifle uh, I kind of have set up, and already you can tell my ride height is significant. You can't get a cheek weld with this gun. You can't, not when you're using your up top optic. Now, one of the options I would have would be going with a lower scope mount, say a 1.5 or even a 1.3. I don't like either of those. So I'm not gonna sacrifice having to turtle into a gun to use my optic just for my red dot height. Cause again, red dot's kind of the backup siding system. So the siding system I'm likely to use more often, if not the most, significantly the most is gonna be my magnified optic. So this is a backup sight or it's for those unique situations. But the problem we run into is which one is actually gonna allow me to do the most and provide the greatest benefit. For my offset, I grabbed my LMT CQB, uh, the Mars LS. I hadn't shot it in a while, so I wanted to bring it out of the range. I'm running a Kales one to six and an offset uh, Holosun 508 on the unit. It's a whole unity system. So 193, 193, everything's 193. Uh, this is just kind of a general purpose rifle. I like to teach very um, introductory magnified optic type stuff with this gun. I use it for, you know, just general purpose uh, training and practice. I like the Kales glass. It's a good one to six, maybe one of, one of my favorite one to sixes. Uh, but this gives me more of a traditional uh, setup of what you'd likely see if someone was going to run an offset red dot. Now, some people don't go up to 193. I can, I can completely support that. Uh, some people are more of a 1.5 and 1.7. Me, I like the more natural head position. Now, on the outside of it, the rifles seem to kind of approach the problem from very similar concepts, but one significant difference is going to be tandem versus stacked. So let's just start with the rifle that's in my hand. I have tandem optics, meaning because they're a, a similar height, if I'm in my magnified and I roll the gun in my shoulder, I go right into my red dot because they're the same height. So the rifle changing its rotation, its cant, if you will, does not force me to change my cheek weld or my height. I literally have to release a little friction in my cheek chin weld to roll the gun and that's it. And I may have to dig into the pocket a little bit to reseat the gun. And then of course I can pull back, add pressure at my support side hand. So it's a very fast transition to go from here to here. Very, very fast. What about the other? Without even seeing it, I think you can see the problem. I'm in my optic, and then I have to come up to get in my red dot. So if I wanna maintain a cheek weld, I can't. I have to maintain a chin weld. Now your neck length may be different than mine, and maybe you can pull it off. I can't. So already, this rifle presents a little bit more of um, a training issue, a practice issue. No big deal, you can still be fast with it, uh, but it's definitely a little bit harder to get consistent mounting on this gun when using the red dot because it's not a tandem system. I'm literally having to come out of a traditional cheek weld and raise my head up to about there, get in that chin weld. So as I'm shooting the gun, I have to be more aware of not introducing excess alignment parallax into my red dot sight picture when I do mount the red dot. This is a big issue. Not so much standing, because when we run these guns standing head to head, I don't, and I'll run the same drills, run them on the shot timer. I'm not seeing significant differences in performance between the 12 o'clock mounting versus the offset 45 degree mounting. The guns just run well. As long as you're practiced with whatever your mounting system is, you're not gonna have any issues. If you have the ability to run two different rifles or two different setups, you're probably not gonna see a big difference anyway, because uh, you're gonna shoot them both. You're gonna get confident with both of them. You're gonna run both of them well. It's when you start using the rifle in less likely, but still very possible shooting positions. Uh, just an example on the range, there's a VTAC barrier. So I figured I'd do some running on that. Even from the standing using exposures and stepped elevated cover positions, simulated cover positions, of course. The 12 o'clock mounting on, the, on this ADM rifle, uh, <laughs> it's awkward. You definitely have to be way more aware of your height over bore in your training and practice. I mean, I shoot this gun frequently and I'm still almost consciously involved at every step of the process in order to make sure I'm not gonna shoot that barrier. I'm making sure that my height over bore is clear because I'm coming into a very Jeffrey Giraffe type situation. 
uh, as far as my chin weld versus my cheek weld when I'm using the magnified optic. It's kind of, at this height, it's, it's almost uncomfortable for me. If I were to try a 193, it would be completely uncomfortable. If I was to go down to a 1.5, it might feel a little bit more friendly, but I don't want a 1.5 mount for my magnified optic. So the difference between the two guns goes from huge to huge when you start running the gun outside of traditional square range mentality of just stand shoot range drills prone shoot drills kneeling shoot drills once you start in interacting with the environment working cover working concealment of course simulated cover simulated concealment you start to recognize at least i do that the 45 offset is really where it's at and i know some people are going to disagree with that and that's okay uh, because they're and, and, and it's not the end of the world and i'll we'll get to it but there are some distinct advantages to the 12 o'clock mounting that that um, I think are worth considering for certain people for certain needs. But when it comes to general purpose, when it comes to a self-defense focused rifle that doesn't have special purposes, say for law enforcement or military, to me the 45 offset, really the hardest thing about it is zeroing it. And that's, that's easily done if you just pay attention to the gun being level at 45, true 45 when you zero it. And that's just being aware of what you're doing. And then you gotta pick a zero distance. Most of your offset optics are going to have one MOA adjustments unless you run an offset like uh, T1 or T2 or uh, RDS or uh, uh, P2. So zeroing at 50 may be problematic depending on how, what kind of a group you consider zeroed. Zeroing at 25 makes a little bit more sense, but then you're going from, for me, uh, almost every gun I have that runs a 45 offset, I'm going from a 100 yard zero to a 50 yard zero. And I've got to remember my holds, but again, backup sighting system. So it's only my primary sighting system in certain environments, and one of those environments would be night vision. So it is very problematic to run a magnified optic unless you run a clip-on under knots. It's just not something, and again, this is a very small category of shooters, but for me, even though I can run a 45 offset and it's gonna work, I can passively aim if I need to, which I don't really prefer to if I have a laser, and this gun's not even set up for it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can passively aim through a 45, but it is a little cumbersome. That's really where the 12 o'clock mounting makes a little bit more sense to me for people who are gonna spend a lot of time shooting under night vision. Um, running a laser on this and just getting a body armor weld and being able to passively aim, it's so far away from your face, it's almost to the same distance that a pistol red dot would be. So it's very, I don't wanna say very, it is more comfortable to acquire the dot from a 12 o'clock position running passively aiming through night vision devices. That is where the 12 o'clock mounting really stands out ahead of the crowd. Again, this is my opinion. Uh, there are some people who shoot different ways, and that means that there may be a different application or a different, they may have a different favorite than I do. But I think when considering what the rifles are going to be set up for, think about the primary use of your gun. Is it for home defense? If it's for home defense, then the assumption is you're going to need to navigate close quarters with it. If you're going to need to navigate close quarters with it, you want a minimal amount of movement in the mounting and the riding of the gun. So I want to be able to keep it... Uh, in whatever position I'm going to have to be in as long as possible, depending on my approach to mm, weaponized geometry, working angles. For me, running a 12 o'clock in a CQB type situation, if we're going to call it that, pretty awkward. Doesn't mean it can't be done. I've done it, but I'd still prefer that offset 45. Um, can I just run through my one power? Absolutely. Uh, that's an option as well. But again, some awkward situations, canting the gun makes maneuvering certain awkward situations easier than running a traditional 12 o'clock. So if you pay attention to certain types of training, certain training doctrines, you'll see a lot of guys come in canted. They work angles canted, certain angles canted, certain type of cover canted. So having a canted optic, if I'm going from 12 to 45, just makes a lot of sense. That doesn't mean this is the way. There are two different ways to approach the rifle. And even though one of the most potentially dangerous statements in shooting is, well, it works for me, uh, that doesn't mean it's uneducated. So if someone's making that statement, it's a very educated statement based on their personal practice, based on common metrics or based on the metrics. If they're looking at time distance accuracy and they're seeing one way is doing things better for them than another way, with the same amount of training, same amount of practice, same amount of open-mindedness, hopefully, then that's just gonna be their way to do it. And me as an instructor, if I see a student doing something that's technically wrong, but it's safe and it's efficient and it's fast, who am I to tell them they have to do it some other way? If it works and it's just as fast as the way I teach or faster or more consistent for that student, or maybe they have other concerns, uh, pre-existing medical conditions, uh, range of motion, whatever, I'm gonna let them run their thing. 
So this is why, you know, I hesitate making videos like this because even though I have a preferred method, the 45, I don't want people using 45 just because I use 45. Educated choices, verify before you trust. So for me, I think laying the case for both systems as well as I possibly can, and this is kind of a conversation I have in classes sometimes, um, the 12 o'clock is great, but it has its limitations. To me, me, the 45 offset does not have as many limitations. And I know there's probably things I haven't mentioned, like we haven't brought, it up, brought up snag hazards or optics, or, or we talked a little bit about parallax or mounting, but we did talk about awkward positions, most likely, least likely shooting, you know, standing square range versus having to shoot underneath broke back prone underneath the, the, front, the front clip of an SUV. This is gonna be the rifle to do that easier. Um, for night vision, 12 o'clock eh, kind of wins for me, but I still can run the 45 just fine. And of the two systems, I'm probably always going to grab a rifle with an offset 45. Um, your mileage may vary. I'm Eric Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.